Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today we have an amazing guest that's going to talk to us all about bookkeeping and minding our business and knowing our numbers because we can't make profit if we don't know what kind of numbers that we're working with here. So without further ado, welcome, uh, welcome Tyler to the show. How are you today? Kristen, I'm having a great day. Thank you so much for having me. Please, please introduce yourself to our audience and tell them where you're from. Sure. So uh, guys, I'm Tyler Jeffcoat. I live in Athens, Georgia, the uh, home of the Bulldogs. Uh, we're in, uh, as you said a minute ago, before we started recording in hot Atlanta, kind of east of Atlanta and uh, introduction for myself. So uh, I am an accountant by trade. Um, I started a healthcare company in 2012 and sold it in 2017. So it was a kind of a started as a kind of a scrappy startup to deal with Alzheimer's issues that my grandparents were having. And ended up being a big company that that I sold. So I'm grateful to have had that experience. And now I, I was kind of a eBay seller, kind of a scrappy online seller guy when I was a college student uh, many moons ago and uh, thought, you know what, I wonder if I could get back into con- kind of coaching CEOs. And so seller accountant was born. We do two things. We do sexy bookkeeping only for e-commerce brands. And we do fractional CFO for about 140 million a year in e-commerce, a lot of Amazon sellers and, and that kind of thing. So my my brother owns a, an appliance repair shop. I, I don't do his stuff. My dad owns a real estate company. I don't do his stuff. We're like crazy focused in our little corner of the universe here in e-commerce. So how did you make a transition then? We're owning this company that was healthcare related. Obviously it seemed like a passion project there with your grandparents struggling or whatever it was that, that kind of happened. How'd you turn the corner from then selling that and moving more into e-commerce and finance in that space? How did you make that transition? I mean, I mean honestly, my, my, uh, my training is that I'm an accountant and my MBA is in finance. And so in some ways it, it was a passion project. The mission of um, really, honestly, just had my my wife's uh, grandfather had an experience. My grandmother had an experience in a nursing home. They were just really terrible. They just weren't very good. They, they weren't receiving the kind of care they deserved. And we thought, I wonder if we could find a way to address that generation better. And so we, so that that part of the story was just a. I can't believe I got to do that. But I had somebody, an investor, come and say, Hey, uh, uh, buddy, would you help me build this company? I was like, Yes, that's what I want to do. And so we got a focus group of about thirty senior citizens together and said, Guys, help us do this better than the ones your senior friends having. And so we had a ended up having a pretty dominant 120 employees, a pretty dominant position in, in the southeast for our model. And and so as I was getting out, as I was selling it, because I owned a small fraction of the the investor really owned most of the company. So I was a the CEO, but I wasn't really the full owner of the company. And so during that hundred days of transition, when I sold the company and I was kind of like had to hang around because of the contract, I was relegated to becoming the bookkeeper for this large company. And I was like, wow, this is kind of cool. Uh, what's not cool is watching this vision, this baby that I built kind of get not treated as well. Like this company didn't, the new leadership team wasn't maybe my favorite, but um, but I did my job. And so uh, we live in a little town, as I kind of mentioned. Uh, my wife told me, she said, Tyler, we can move anywhere you want. Um, that isn't a big city. So don't move me to Atlanta, Chicago, DC, find somewhere else. And because I have a non-compete, uh, had a non-compete, it's not there anymore for healthcare. I was like, well, I wonder what I can do. And one of my best friends here in town is the guy who founded an Amazon software company called Seller Labs. So mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever heard of Seller Labs, but those, yes. those geeks have been around for a while. And Brandon was in a mastermind with me here in Athens, the guy who originally was selling textbooks on Amazon and then wrote Feedback Genius is kind of his tool to help himself. And I was like, wait a second, this is not Amazon sending me and Emily this stuff every day. It's actually these sellers. I was like, unbelievable. And it just immediately became this kind of clear hero in my mind was like, Bezos is going to get paid. Shopify is going to get paid. I want the seller of this kind of one to $10 million or maybe half a million to $10 million brand um, to make money. And Mm -hmm. I'm an accountant. I can't help them with marketing because I stink at marketing. Let me see if I can help them with accounting. And so that's kind of how we pivoted into um, the business. Yeah. And so, so have you ever, you, you said you were a scrappy eBay seller, you know, it takes one to know one, right? So, um, so <laughs> when you, I kind of moved from that. So that was your interest maybe in, in the space and kind of knowing a few people that were doing some stuff. Um, so what, let's just talk basics of bookkeeping, for example, because we know it's really important. And it's most of the time, the entrepreneur types are not necessarily accountant bookkeeping types. And right. it's one of those things where I love, you know, the creativity and the putting stuff out there and the hustle and all that kind of stuff when it comes to the numbers. It's 
it's like, uh oh, this is where we all get clammed up and start getting uncomfortable because now we have to talk about taking care of those. And I am a huge advocate for this because you can't make money if you don't know you're making money and you don't know you're making money if you don't mind your business and mind business means minding your numbers. So um, basic bookkeeping for those just starting out. If someone literally has not even started their business yet, can you give us like some top line numbers? Like what are the best things that we can keep track of to just make sure that we're keeping out? I don't care if it's a scrap piece of paper and a pencil, like what is the best thing to keep track of? Well, I think I think you mentioned it there. Like as a, as a brand new startup, you want to do is you want to spend as little money on accounting as possible. Like I, I really believe that. I mean, and I'm an accountant. Like I was a banker before I went back to grad school, and I I didn't do my own darn bookkeeping for the healthcare business for the first six months. I'm I'm not proud of that, but it was just as a CEO, my primary role was to try to find a path to revenue. And I think for business owners starting an Amazon or e-commerce business, it's kind of the same, right? I mean, nothing. Uh, here's the problem: uh, my colleagues, the accountants in the world, really prefer to be historians. They're not very forward thinking. I want to, they, they want to think about what happened in the past. And, and for me, my mind said, to be honest with you, I have 25 employees on my team right now at Seller Accountant, and almost all of them are better bookkeepers than Tyler Jeffcoat. And the reason is that they all are really good at that detail. Let's get things in order. The way my brain works, and the reason I think kind of empathize with the entrepreneurs out there is I only care about this data to the extent that it helps me win in the future, helps me make, make better choices. And so if I were a sub $10,000 a month seller, I was brand new, I would at least keep a spreadsheet. I might go ahead and, and pay the 50 bucks a month for QuickBooks Online. I might even pay 50 bucks a month for a tool like A2X Accounting that kind of helps draw that Amazon data out and put it into buckets for you within your accounting. And the reason I care about it pretty early on, as you alluded to, is... I have to be able to answer the question, did, did last month create a smiley face or a frowny face? Like, I don't need to <laughs> overcomplicate it, right? But, but I need to know whether I made money. I need to know whether my efforts are generating happiness for my family or sadness. And so I think at a bare minimum from the beginning, you got to keep an eye on that. And then as you get above maybe 20,000 a month in revenue, okay, now this is pivoting from being a hobby to being an actual business. I probably, if I love accounting, I just need to do it. You know what I mean? And if I hate accounting, I probably need to hire someone who does it for me. And at that point, it becomes a little bit more important. Even by the way, uh, I, two of my largest CFO clients, Kristen, are, are wholesale arbitrage, eight-figure wholesale arbitrage clients. So these are not necessarily brand owners, but for these guys to understand the gross profit in June of 2022 against maybe the gross profit in June of last year, that's really, really important for them because it helps them understand What's the impact of Amazon increasing its FBA fees? What's the impact of my logistics charges being higher in other channels? And so that's where I would start. Keep it simple. But as you grow, invest a little bit more in getting your books to where they're good. What are some of the mistakes you think people are making when it comes to the accounting and bookkeeping side that you're, you guys see as a common problem? I think the biggest mistake is the obvious one. It's, it's what you call opting out. <laughs> it's like, I just, I hate bookkeeping. I, I didn't make it. Uh, my brother's a great example of this. My brother is an entrepreneur. He like was the guy that made it through math class, but like didn't love it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He wasn't, wasn't his bag. He's creative. He's very right brain. He's an incredible sales guy. And the last thing he wants to do, I mean, it's like, it's like grinding on a chalkboard for him to spend minutes looking at accounting mm -hmm. But as his company grew, as it got more complex, as it got more um, you know, sophisticated, each percentage point, I mean, think about it this way. Like if you're a million dollar seller, every percentage point is, is like $10,000 in your family's <laughs> wallet or out of their wallet. Like, I don't know about you guys, but for me, that's like- A lot I'm, of money. <laughs> that's enough money that it needs to matter to me. And yes. so, and, and the worst thing that I, so, so error opting out, error is- um, doing much kind of a simplified cash basis accounting. So for instance, Amazon sends me a, a paycheck every 14 days. And instead of bothering to align that with the month that I sold it, like for instance, right now it's kind of the first week of July. Um, if Amazon pays me today, half of that payment is going to be related to July and half of it's actually related to June. And so having a system for understanding roughly when my sales happened so that I don't do this. Cause every, every third or fourth month, Amazon pays me a third time. And I'm going to look at my books. And I'm going to say, I am a genius. I could do no wrong. I'm making money. I can't believe it because I got an extra paycheck. That doesn't mean I'm actually a genius. I just <laughs> lucked out and had a, a third 
two week cycle in a month. And so taking the effort to split things into the month when you actually sold the units is really important. Um, yeah, we can talk about other things, but I think those are the two most common errors. Yeah, that's that's an interesting point there because you know a lot of times when you just are starting up, you don't have a complicated system. It's really is money in, money out. I made a hundred dollars. I spent seventy two on on you know cost of goods. The end, right? I mean, it's not hard math when you're first really starting out. But it, especially like you said, the the creative side of us, the right brained, don't care about the numbers but need to um, to move forward. That that's kind of when we marry those things together. So I think the mistakes that people make in the beginning is well, I can't afford to hire somebody, right? But I also, you know, I'm not that great at this. So I'll just sweep it under the rug until it becomes a $10,000 problem instead of a $500 problem, right? So um, when it comes to that. So when it comes to the accounting and the bookkeeping and that being your forte, what is, what do you think um, is like an improvement that someone can make even right now? Say their mind, I'm, my, my number is pretty good, but like, is there always a secret sauce? It's like, if you do this, this one thing that can put so much more money into your, your company, your, your brand, your profits. So I, I'm a big fan of James Clear. He wrote a book called Atomic Habits. If you guys haven't read it, it's really good. It's about kind of his premise is we don't rise to the level of our goals. We actually fall to the level of our habits. So if I can just cultivate little tiny atomic level habits that I do each week, I can, or every day, maybe I can actually build a better life and not feel like I'm having to work that much harder. And so if I could give uh, your listeners one gift, Kristen, it would be, put a 30 minute block on your calendar every week. That's kind of like do my dang job time where I have to do my finances. Even if I hate it, I can do anything for 30 minutes a week. If I do a 30 minute block, maybe it's Monday morning, you know, pick a time of the week where it's convenient and force myself to just take a look at things because what I don't want to have happen is I don't want to get six months down the line and be surprised that like, for instance, I was on a CFO call with a client a few weeks ago and uh, we just took over the CFO case and realized, oh my gosh, we were underpricing the green one, the green unit. We were underpricing it so much so that we actually lost money on every unit we sold for the last six weeks. <gasps> that's not good. And so the quicker we can create a feedback loop to make sure we're catching those oops, uh oh's, uh, you know, the more power we can have to make changes. But if I could give you a gift, spend 30 minutes a week, don't spend 10 hours a week. This isn't worth 10 hours. Spend 30 minutes a week looking at your numbers, understanding how profitable your channels and your products are. And, um, and also then just be curious. Like if you, um, if you stink at inventory management, like everyone does, by the way, mm -hmm. go to a webinar. You know, I think I saw one of your other episodes, Kristen, uh, somebody mentioned like inventory lab, like there are good tools out there. A2X is a great repository of information. Tax jars website is, is amazing in terms of information. Give yourself the gift of a few minutes a week of learning so that you can kind of get up the basics of, of managing your, your own business. Yeah, we are definitely cut from the same cloth with that. I'm all about education. If you don't know, learn. Don't hide from it. Learn from it. Learn enough to not kind of screw yourself over and hire someone. You know, that, that if you know nothing about it and you hire someone, you don't even know if you have a bad accountant or a good one. And trust me, I have heard many, many stories of clients over the years of like, well, I had an accountant, but they had no idea how to do e-commerce. They had no idea what to do. Amazon seller fees and this this charge that they take and then they put back and they they don't understand the logistics of Amazon specifically. So that they, they, they're great at accounting, but accounting not for this particular niche. And the thing is, is it it's special, it's different. Amazon has fees for everything and some fees are oh, is this cost of goods or is this part of our, our seller fees and all of those things are so complicated to understand it's really easy to be like and i'm putting that one in the closet until tax day and then i i cry for two weeks right like we don't want that so i'm staying on top of those things and getting an expert expert like you know tell us a little bit about um your company and what you guys do and what you guys provide, because there are solutions for those who are trying to sweep it under the rug and shouldn't, um, or even, you know, there are affordable solutions. And the thing I say about accounting specifically is you can't afford not to have accounting because you don't know how much you're making unless you're keeping track of that. And if you're not good at it, someone else needs, I mean, you don't have to like, for example, if you need surgery, you go to a surgeon, you, you don't go to urgent care, <laughs> right? So it's like you, your, your business needs, you know, the financial surgeon that you need as accounting. And if you're not doing it, you've got to have it done by someone. So tell us a little bit more about what you guys provide. Yeah. So a super quick comment on mindset. If you hate accounting and you're trying to find a way to kind of motivate yourself, 
just remember that everyone hates accounting. And so it's actually the, if you find something kind of hard about business and you just choose to like get a little bit better than the average person is on it, that's a really easy way to get a competitive advantage over your competitors because everyone else hates it too. And so when it comes to accounting, realize that if you give, if you give yourself the gift of that 30 minutes a week to either pursue education or understand your numbers better, you're going to be doing better than 90% of your Amazon seller kind of brethren out there. And so if I could invest 30 minutes a week and become better than 90% of my competitors across the world, man, that's a pretty good return on investment. So that's a mindset yes. kind of thing. And then when it comes to seller accountants, I think, um, I think our services kind of fall into two buckets. So if you are less than, let's say, twenty five dollars to $30,000 a month in average revenue, uh, we do have a course. Um, I'll, I'll make sure you have a link, Kristen, so you can put it in the show notes. But there's, there's probably um, a better use of your money than paying for a recurring accounting service at this point. But you do want to get it set up correctly where you already kind of have your numbers where they want to be. We'll teach you how to set up QuickBooks Online and how to set up A2X. We love A2X. And kind of do the basics of understanding how to manage your inventory and your cost to get sold. Uh, I mean, 500 bucks, like, right. I mean, like I, before you hire somebody for a thousand bucks a month or 500 bucks a month, if you're small, you may want to choose to do it yourself and just get up that education curve, seller accountant. Then once you reach about, I don't there's no magic number because if you have a more complicated business, it might be a lower revenue point, but for the average seller, probably once you get to about 30 to 40 K a month in revenue, okay, now I'm trying to spin too many plates and I'm in my own way because I'm not getting it done and I just don't want to, I don't have the capacity. And so at that point, seller accountant can be your teammate to come clean up the accounting that kind of got you know lost in the shuffle over the last six months and then just become your monthly partner where we, it's turnkey every 15th of the month. You're going to get the financials from the prior month. They're going to be right. Um, and, and not only are they going to be right, but they're uh, we were involved with almost $90 million in exits last year where sellers were selling to aggregators and other investors. And our bookkeeping got through the most stringent due diligence in the world to get out of that. And so if you are, if you're kind of a nervous type and you want to know that it's done correctly, you know, you know, obviously you can pay 20 bucks an hour, maybe get a VA to do it. But if you want to make sure it's done right, then probably hiring a US based firm that really is a, is a specialist is a good idea. Well, and a specialist, of course, in e commerce, because it, it's not it, it's a different game. It's a completely different game. And yes, we can do bookkeeping our on our own for different other businesses and things like that. But when it comes to Am Amazon, we just can't mess with that. There's so many numbers and so many things, especially when you get over a certain number. Um, it's difficult to me. I mean, I can't manage mine on my own. I wouldn't want to I don't need to I'm like, it's really I'm one of those people that like, what you trade that payment for is like, Oh, but at, like you said, the 15th of every month, these financials line up and like, here you go. Here's your green light. Here's your happy face that you're you know in the right place and moving forward and to have that done is like you pay for peace of mind which i'm happy to pay for it's like car insurance no one wants it but then when you need it you're so glad you paid for it right yep. Yep. so i appreciate all totally. of the basics and everything especially about the mindset because i feel like that's the most important piece about entrepreneurship and or running your business is is you're doing it for a reason right the reason is profitability and that profitability buys you what you're what you're looking for whatever that is for some people it's a passion project for some people it's just extra so they can quit their nine to five sometimes it is your nine to five whatever it is for you um being happy with the numbers that you have is is up to you because if you don't know them you can't be happy or sad about them so i really appreciate your time and your energy coming here and just teaching us a little bit about what we need to know for our numbers and our bookkeeping again um everyone can find um Tyler and his team at sellerAccountant.com. And is there anything else, last thing you had like to add about your YouTube channel? I know you guys have some education there as well. Tell us about that. Yeah. So the Seller Accountant YouTube channel is a great way to get some lots and lots of free videos, lots and lots of free education. We actually have a fledgling little podcast that's also on YouTube called Return on Podcast. If you want to geek out on investing in e-com, um, you know, feel free to join us there. Awesome. That is super helpful. I did want to say one more thing. I, I kind of forgot about this. The question got hidden <clears throat> towards the bottom here is you said something about keeping your, your having really good bookkeeping is important. I am definitely talking to my audience on a regular basis about exit strategies, you know, with, with the world and the times that we're in that it doesn't suit you always to maybe you're really passionate about a brand for five or six years and then life changes and you move on to something else and say, you want to say, Oh, I've got a better opportunity. I don't want to leave. I want to exit. I want to sell my business. And I'm very, 
I, I'm adamant about people keeping their duckies in a row so that they can do that any any moment that they choose. And keeping your your you said something about due diligence, and I've gone through this process before myself, so I understand the paperwork that's involved in that. Um, and tell us a little bit about what that looks like in the end when someone you're deciding I'm going to sell my brand, and now they want to look at you have buyers interested. What does a bookkeeping have to do with that side of the story? So yeah, it's just the the backdrop is every business is an investment. And the for instance, when I sold my first company, my entire family's net worth was my piece of this company. And so when an opportunity came to sell it, I needed to be pretty aggressive. I mean, I have a wife and two kids at home, like we're all in this together. And so like, if you've already sold three businesses, you might have the luxury of saying, I'm going to be doing this until I'm 95 years old and I'm in it forever. But for the rest of us, we need to understand that the markets do change. Opportunities do change. And so, and so here's my advice. Pick a number, have a, have a goal for this investment where it's like, okay, man, if everything, if I was blessed and things were perfect, somebody made me an offer for this amount, I'm out, I'm getting out and I'm going to make something else. I'm going to bet on myself that I can build something else. And the reason having that number is so important, Kristen, is that I had a client last year that had his number. We'd gone through the exercise an investor offered him that number, but he was afraid he was missing out. And he said, no, of course, the market kind of went down a little bit at the end of last year and he didn't get his number. And so if you know what you want, then you can guilt-free let it go when that number pops up. From an accounting standpoint, because we have done the due diligence for several of the ag aggregators that are out there, just put yourself, even if you're not a numbers put person, put yourself in the shoes of a buyer. When I walk onto like a car lot, I'm going to buy a car. If the grass is unmowed and the guy looks greasy and everything like the lights are kind of dangling because they're not maintained, my buyer anxiety, I don't even realize it, but my buyer anxiety goes way up and I'm not going to pay as high a price for a car. I'm probably not even going to buy the car. But if I go to the same car lot and everything is pristine, the guy is very cordial. He's not greasy. Like it's a very like pleasant experience. Then I'm going to build trust in that relationship. And that means I get to make money. It's the same thing when I sell a business. I want my books to be clean. I want them to be a very transparent storytelling. I'm not going to have a perfect track record. I'm going to have to say, hey, you know what? Last January, I ran out of stock. Here's where I kind of blew it. Here's what I learned from it. Investors really appreciate you being transparent. And then also, if you just created a Dropbox or Google Drive folder with everything, every bank statement organized in a folder, have your VA put every invoice from your factories in a folder, just make it to where that due diligence team is like, oh my gosh, this is so easy. I've got everything I need. I can just do it. Again, you're going to lower the anxiety of that team and they're going to be much more likely to give you the number you want and close quickly. That is excellent advice. I appreciate that. And I you know, can't wait to walk through that process myself and the process of transitioning a couple of brands that I've built. And so working on that as well. And I know that having having all of the stuff organized and in the right place is is does make the the future buyers very happy to know that it's it's right there. So again, thank you so much for all of your advice and all of your uh, just the mindset work is so important. I think for every entrepreneur, we are always looking to grow and change and expand and, and grow comfortable comfortable in when we're confident with our numbers, then we can move forward knowing that we're doing the right things for ourselves and our, our company. So thank you so much again, Tyler, for that. I'll, you guys to, to contact all of them. It is a selleraccountant.com. Also, don't forget to check out the podcast, which is, tell me again. Yep. Return on podcast. Return so on podcast. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so much. And we'll take you guys. Listen, I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing. Thank you for listening to the Amazon Files podcast. I don't think, take that for granted. We'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files. Take care, Tyler. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks, Kristen. Bye.